What's happening folks? Thanks for tuning in. I realize it's been a long time since I've actually done a video covering any sort of truck mod, any truck, anything really. So it's about time. I went to bring my truck in to look at getting some new tires. Turns out my front two tires were, they were about dead. About time to replace them. And I decided it's a good time to go with wider tires just to go with a cooler look, better traction. And I've got enough of a lift on my truck that I can fit 35s on there, so I might as well go with bigger tires. The one problem is that those tires will hang out a little bit further. And so I don't want to have a whole bunch of rock chips or just splatter all over the side of my truck. So I needed fender flares. And I didn't want the huge ones, the bushwhacker style, that just provide almost a huge air dam covering up the side of the truck. So I went with uh, the smaller, kind of OEM style fender flares just to give me about an inch of extra lip just to kind of protect the truck from the tires a little bit. So today, I'm gonna show you how to paint and prep and install those fender flares. So let's start with the product that I actually ordered. So there are several companies that make these. Uh, EGR is probably the biggest company um, that I've seen, but I think a lot of these are actually made by the OEM companies that make the original equipment for the auto manufacturers but then they just kind of keep the plant running in China and sell the rest on eBay. So that's where I got these. They didn't really say any brand name, it just said OEM style fender flares. Um, I got them on eBay. It was about 140, 150 delivered for a set of all four for my 2014 Ram 1500 Lone Star. So they're just made of ABS plastic. What I like is they already have the 3M foam uh, installed and this isn't just like on the back of command hooks that you would use in your home this is actually the automotive grade so this is what the factory would use to put these on so I like that that's already on there if that wasn't on there no big deal you can buy it at AutoZone or O'Reilly Auto Parts any one of those places but I like that it's already on there it also came with these blocks of foam I think that's really just for shipping to keep them from banging against each other because it actually says to take them off uh, so I'm not really sure what they're for other than other than shipping but I'm not too worried about that. But anyway, just a big piece of ABS plastic. If you have a black truck or you like the matte black look, you could just run it on there just like this. I'm afraid that this sort of stuff is gonna fade a little bit in the sunlight because it is just, it's just ABS plastic that looks like it's probably injection molded. So I think there's a good chance it'll fade in the sunlight and it might look a little bit off on my white truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint to match. Now, anytime you're painting stuff to put on your truck, you can open the driver's side door and there is a little paint code on the label on there that tells you the exact uh, style, I guess, the exact mix of paint that you need. Uh, usually it's like a three or four digit code. And on mine I had one, but my truck is a gloss white, so that's easy enough to match without that code. Yes, I know there are different types of whites, but a bright gloss white is pretty forgiving. So as long as I'm fairly close, it's gonna look good. It more comes down to how even I get the paint and how even I get the gloss. Because the gloss is actually pretty important. If you have a clear coat on your truck paint, which most likely you do, but you don't do a clear cut on these, the color is just not gonna look quite right and the finish just isn't gonna look right. But right now, I've got this whole set, just spreading them out in my garage. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take a sanding block and just rough them up a little bit. So the sanding isn't really to make it perfectly smooth, to make it you know perfectly evenly finished. All you're trying to do is rough it up a little bit to get a nice solid primer adhesion. Just rough it up a bit so it will stick. So after you sand it, you want to make sure to wipe out the dust just so that you're not painting on top of this because now you kind of have a fine coating of dust on here. If it was wood, you would want to use a dry rag, but since this is essentially just styrene plastic, you're going to use just a damp rag to pick up all of that dust. So go ahead and wipe down all the pieces, get them nice and clean, and you don't want to use like acetone or xylene or anything else on this because odds are it'll totally melt this stuff. So this is exactly why you want to wipe it down. Look at all that nasty black dust. And if I didn't wipe it down I'd essentially be painting right on top of that and paint's never going to stick to a dusty gross surface like that nearly as well as it's going to stick to a clean surface. So. That's why you wipe it down. Um, 
Otherwise, let's talk about general prep here. So I've got just some butcher paper laid down in my garage. If you've got a painter's cloth or an old tarp, that works just as well. I just happen to have butcher paper, so that's what I used. And then I've got a light set up over my workspace. That is very helpful, especially, well, working on anything. It, it, you can work better if you have proper lighting, but especially if you're painting something. So often you can assume that you're doing it evenly, but just adding a little bit more light will really show you what you're working with and you'll be able to see what you're doing much better. So that's just a cheap work light that I got from Walmart. That's just, I basically hung it up on my um, garage door, like the, the rail that it rides on. So nothing fancy there. You may be wondering, well, Adventure One, why are you doing this yourself when you could just go down to four wheel parts or someplace like that and just have it done? It's not that expensive. Yeah, I know. Uh, I could even I could even probably get these same things painted at you know Mako or any auto parts place for a couple hundred bucks, but it, it all comes down to in part I'm just a cheap redneck who can't stand paying somebody to do something that I could do myself when I have plenty of free time and all the skills and tools I need to do it. And second, I think anytime you do something like this, you're a little bit more proud of it and you usually learn something. It's like cooking a great dinner instead of just eating at a nice restaurant. It tastes good either way, but when you make it yourself, it just means just a little bit more. So even if it costs the same, if you learn something, it's worth it. So in terms of cost, let's kind of itemize it a little bit. So I've got $140 in the actual fender flares. Uh, I've got the sanding block. I got some self etching primer. I got two cans of gloss enamel paint, and then I got a clear coat uh, spray enamel. So in total, we're at like $30 in supplies, so it doesn't cost a lot. Just basically takes a little bit of elbow grease and just a little bit of time, and I think it'll turn out pretty good. So let's keep going. I'm gonna turn on my box fan and crack open my garage door so that I get proper ventilation so I'm not accidentally inhaling a whole bunch of paint fumes. And then we'll get started with the next step. First up is the primer. I'm using this Rust-Oleum self-etching primer. Now, could I have gotten away with something cheaper? Yeah, probably, but is primer the type of thing that's worth saving a dollar over? Usually not. If it's not gonna work well, there's not really anything you can do about it. So I think it's worth it to get good paint and primer, especially for something like this. This can be out in the elements, this can be hit by rocks, stuff like that. So that's why I'm going with this Rust-Oleum. Not that I'm painting metal and there's any risk of rust, they just make a good quality paint. So one can of primer ended up just barely covering it for me. There's just a tiny bit left. So if you're working on something that's maybe bigger fender flares than these, or you're nervous about your ability to get it all done with one can, go ahead and pick up a second one. Better to have too much than not enough. But I managed to get it done with one can and just a tiny bit extra. But while that's setting up, while that's drying, I'm gonna go find something else to do for about two hours. All right, I'm back. So I let the primer sit up for about an hour and 45 minutes, almost two hours. Really, primer doesn't usually need that long. Usually you can handle it within about 15 minutes and then probably wanna give it a, at least 45 minutes for it to set up properly. But I always like to just give it a little bit extra time. It's pretty warm in here. It's probably almost 80 degrees actually down in Texas in my garage. But if you're in colder temperatures, it's gonna need a little bit more time. So. I'm actually gonna change up the order of my installation a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes in the fender flares now. And that's basically just because after I was looking at these, the marks for where you drill the holes are these tiny little indentations, and I'm worried that if I start filling it up with paint, I'm not gonna be able to find them easily later. So I'm gonna do that now before I layer on more and more paint and I totally lose those holes. If I was to rewind this video and do it all, all again, I'd probably actually do that before I even primed it. I think right now we got one coat of primer. Drilling through that's not gonna be a big deal. If it looks like it's chipping the primer, you know, in, in a pretty big divot outside the holes, I'll just hit a spot of primer around each of the holes. But I'm gonna go ahead and drill those first. So I'm glad 
I did that because I think it would have been really hard to find those little markings. It was already hard to find them with primer on there. It's just a couple little divots in there that make a circle and then you're supposed to drill out the middle of the circle. So it would have been really hard to find if it was covered in paint. It was already kind of hard to find in primer. But after you do it, you will have seven little holes just like that one in each fender flare, front and rear, seven in each. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this again with the sanding block just to take off some of those burrs and then touch it up with the primer a little bit just so there's no black plastic remaining. It's all primed. Again, if I was gonna do it all over, I probably would've done that very first thing, but that's learning. So here we go for a little touch up. Prep work is now done, including doing parts of it twice, just because of that mistake about drilling the holes, but I got it sanded, got it wiped down, got it cleaned up, looks good. Nice coat of primer on there. So now we're gonna start with the real thing. This is just a Rust-Oleum uh, gloss protective enamel, basically just a really hard gloss paint. And it's late at night now, so I'm gonna give this one coat and then go to bed and then give it several hours to dry and then wake up early tomorrow morning, hit it with another coat because especially on your first coat, want a lot of a lot of solid dry time on this. And that's what will help it, you know, set up really well. And I'd rather go light on the first coat than accidentally go too heavy and have any drips. So first coat, time to roll. So the first coat is done. I ended up going a little bit heavier with the first coat than I originally intended, but I think anytime you're painting with a light color, it's really tempting to do that just because you want to get that, you know, that nice solid even coverage. I used up exactly one whole can on the whole first coat. So if this can be done in two solid coats, then I will come out perfectly. There's a chance it may need a third coat, in which case I'll probably need to go pick up another can. But I don't know, I may be able to get away with just two, but first coat looks good. We're gonna let it kind of sit up and dry overnight, and then tomorrow, we're gonna get back to it. So I let it dry overnight, and then I gave it a fresh coat this morning. Turns out today was pretty much drizzly and rainy all day long, so it took pretty much the whole day for the second coat to dry, but it's looking good. I went back with some 320 grit sandpaper and just kind of touched up a few places where it had a little, just a few little bubbles and just little bit, bits of dust, stuff like that, that had landed in the paint. I didn't really have any drips, which means I, I did a good job of not applying too thick of a coat, which was good, but I did have a few just little bubbles and crinkles. I uh, just kind of sanded that off and then gave it just another light coat, fixed that up. But now it's time to apply the clear coat. So for the clear coat, I am using this Rust-Oleum acrylic lacquer, um, just a full gloss clear coat to kind of give it some shine and protect the paint. So I've got two cans of this. I doubt I'll need both full cans. I'll probably use a full can and just a little bit out of the second. So I'm gonna lay on a thick clear coat, uh, let that dry, lay on another clear coat, and then I'm gonna take some polish and just kind of polish it up just to give it a nice even shine. All right, so the clear coat is done drying set up pretty nicely. It did reveal that I've got one little hickey in the paint that doesn't look too good, a little black smudge mark, but honestly that's something that I'll just have to come back and fix at another time because the paint and the clear coat's already dried, so yeah, there's only one little mark, so overall that's not too bad, but it'd be, it'd be nice if it turned out perfectly, but it didn't. But anyway, I'm trying to wrap this up. I'm polishing it with this uh, new finish. So what I like about this finish, I've used it before, is it's really easy. Unlike a rubbing compound or something where you really gotta buff it in and spend a whole lot of time on it. This, you basically, you use it a lot like wax, like you would wax a car. 
you basically just wipe it on, kind of as a circular motion, let it kind of cloud up a little bit, then let it dry, and then go back and wipe it off. And so I'm gonna do that probably, probably twice, and these things will have a nice shine on them, and they'll be ready to install. All right, so I've got a basic polish on all the fender flares, and like I said, I did have a couple stuffs in the paint earlier, but overall they turned out very nice. And what I like is the general level of shine matches the truck very well. So definitely a clear coat on the truck, some nice shine, some nice shine on here. So it won't look like you have gloss right next to it, almost an eggshell or a mat. It'll, the shininess will generally match pretty well. So time to install these. And I think I'm going to start with the driver's side rear first. So these basically just use the actual screws that are originally in here. And that's why I needed to pre-drill it earlier. So I'll take out these screws, basically put it on using the same screws, get it fit kind of where I wanted. And one thing that's important to look at is see these little detail lines. There are actually little marks on the fender flare that index to those, so that's important to line up. Then after you get it all screwed on and lined up, then you'll want to pull the adhesive strip on the back uh, to basically make the top part adhere to the side of the truck. Alright, so as you're working on this towards the back of the rear wheels, if you've got any mud flaps or I had these little plastic covers that basically just covered that lip behind the wheel, you will have to take that off. There's two screws in there and then there's two push pins that you basically just need to pry and break the pins so that you can pull this off. But that's something that I kind of had to figure out. I'm sure it's probably in the instructions somewhere, but you do have to take this off to get the rear one on. But right now I've got it mostly kind of pinned in place, got about half of the screws loosely set up. So I'm just getting it in place first before I tighten anything down. All right, so I've got all the bolts on there. Looks like it's fitting really well. Uh, even these little things, these little tabs are indexing on there perfectly. Looks like a great fit. Next thing I need to do is peel off the tape. Uh, you won't be able to see it well if I film it on there, so let me show you on the other one. Uh, it's these 3M strips behind there. Looks like there's four different strips. So basically I'm just going to get behind there with my finger if I can. If not, I'm going to use a screwdriver or a pocket knife to get that started. And then I'm basically just going to peel that off on all of these and let it go and push it up against the side of the truck. And then after I do that, I will go back to all these screws and just kind of snug it up just a little bit more. So that way it will be tape down nice and solid on the top and the screws will kind of pull it in on the bottom. All right, so I have all the fender flares bolted on and I pulled the tape to get the adhesive on the top. They're all looking good. It ended up taking quite a bit longer than I thought. Just those things fit pretty tight. So you kind of got to, you know, loosen some screws to be able to get the adhesive on a certain part, push that on and tighten other screws. So you kind of got to fidget with it a little bit. So another thing that was a little bit confusing to me was the total number of holes in the fender flare does not necessarily match the total number of holes in the sheet metal or in the plastic inner fender liner. So, well, the ones with inserts that you can actually tap into. So you kind of have to figure out which screws you can actually use, which ones you can't. Now the kit that I got did come with a couple little plastic of these they look like screws, but they're really clips. I don't know technically what they're called, but it's what holds a lot of auto trim in place. And then it also came with self tappers. Now I've got enough of those inserts on there that I don't need to use the self tappers. I think that's just if you want added security, basically screwing into the sheet metal even more. I don't think I need to do that because they all had holes in the sheet metal. It was just whether or not the inner fender actually had an insert. So I will use these two plastic clips it came with. Um, I might even go get more just because that's not, it's not going to go anywhere, but if I wanted to fill in all the screw holes with clips, two isn't enough. So I'm going to go ahead and set these in there right now. Well, that's not going to work. Well, I tried putting in these clips just to hold it in, 
but it looks like these are actually a much bigger diameter than the hole I drilled and the hole in the sheet metal. Uh, I obviously could drill bigger holes, but I also know these clips are like really cheap at AutoZone. So I'd rather just go get smaller clips um, that fit than drill bigger holes. But that's a pretty minor thing. They're not going to go anywhere. They're on. I just need to go pick up some more clips. But let's take a look at it. Overall, the install turned out pretty nice. The color matches really well. Now, this is a white truck with white fender flares, so white and black are probably going to be the only two colors that I would really trust doing on my own, trying to get it to match. But that looks really good. You can see even those indexing marks where it lines up. It's kind of a little notch that helps guide it into the right place, I guess. That looks good. You can see the bolts on the inside. Those look good. Overall, it's a very nice, clean, almost looks like it was done from the factory. I mean, you're going to have to look at that really carefully and closely to tell the difference between a RAM that has these style flares that was not factory done and one that was. But I think it turned out pretty good. And it gives me a little bit of an extra lip. So when I put on bigger tires, it'll actually come all the way to the side of the tire and that'll help give me it, it'll help even out the look but it'll also give me some extra coverage against you know pebbles flying up and stuff like that even mud splatter from the tires so definitely an interesting truck project that you can do yourself requires a little bit of time and a little bit of elbow grease but nothing technical well i hope you guys enjoyed that i don't do too many truck mod type videos just because it's not the main I don't know subject of my channel but my truck goes with me on all of my adventures so it's a pretty crucial part when you look at it that way so hope you enjoyed it tell me if you like this kind of stuff until next time stay safe be free and never stop seeking adventure